Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we're gonna be shooting Barnes Vortex 62 grain solid copper TSX boat tail. I wanna make sure and get it right in 556 NATO. And here are the boxes for those Barnes Vortex 556 NATO loads. I did in my intro clip just a second ago, I filmed each of these separately, but I've decided to combine these into a single video so we can compare them side by side. So that's what we're going to do going forward. Let's take a look at the 62 grain one first. Sorry for the shadows. The sun is going in and out behind clouds. Notice how it says for one in nine twist or faster. So the heavier your bullet is, typically the faster the twist rate you need in your barrel. So for the 62 grain, Barnes is recommending one in nine or faster. And then for your 70 grain, it says one in eight twist or faster. So interesting note there. And the rifle that we're gonna be shooting these out of is a CZ 527, and it has a one in nine twist. So I will show a little accuracy test to see if there's any major difference between the two. And then on the back of both boxes, it has the same information. It's just promo information about the bullet itself. It's nothing specific to each individual load. And there is no velocity information anywhere on the box. And let's go ahead and open one of them up and take a look at the ammo. I have opened both of them already. And visually speaking, you cannot tell the ammo apart from each other. So the only way you can tell is by the box or yanking the bullets and measuring the weight. The ammunition is identical between both the 62 and 70 grain load. And so here's your ammo, comes in this plastic holder. We'll pull one out. Very clean, pretty brass, great for reloading, I'm sure. There's that hollow point in the TSX bullet. We're gonna go shoot both of these, the 62 and 70 grain side by side, compare them and we'll see how they do. And the test rifle today is my CZ527 carbine. It's got an 18 or 18 and a half inch barrel. I don't exactly recall. Chambered in 223, of course. Up top, I've got a Vortex Crossfire 2 3 to 9 by 40 scope. And coming on back, I've got one of my leather cartridge pouch cuffs, which incidentally perfectly holds a CZ527 magazine, coincidentally enough, so it works for that as well. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you, I've got my wild boar design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And let's take a look at the velocities for that 62 grain Barnes Vortex 5.56 NATO load. We got a duplicate velocity, that's pretty cool. So our high was 30.65, our low was 3023, and our average was 3045. So we got an average over 3,000 feet per second, that's pretty cool. And let's go ahead and take a look at the velocities for that 70 grain Barnes TSX bullet 5.56 NATO. Our high velocity is 29.49, our low is 29.11, and our average is 29.36. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting both the 62 and 70 grain Barnes TSX loads, the 5.56 NATO loads, and I am happy to report we captured all three of both loads, so we got all six bullets. We're going to come over here to the left side and take a look at the 62 grain load first. And these blocks are a little bit dark. When you melt them down and reform them a couple of times, you're supposed to be able to do it over 10 times. But once you do it just a few times, they start to darken a little bit. It doesn't change how they function, just changes the color a little bit. But you can see the bullets right here. And that bullet right there, the other one is right underneath that. So penetration wise, we had two that were right about the front of it. I'm gonna give both of those 25 inches. And then this one right here is right about 25 and a half inches. That is some pretty nice penetration and it does look like they expanded at least some. We'll dig them out and take a look of course here in a minute. And coming on back to the first block, 
see if I can show you. There is some decent temporary wound cavity in here as well, or permanent, whatever you want to call it. Um, it starts to expand at about really the one and a half inch mark. And again, sorry, the block is kind of dark. I can see it with my eyes. It's probably tough on the camera. You have some good expansion right here, and then it tapers off right here at about the eight to nine inch mark. But there's some good wound cavity in there, especially for a two, two, three, five, five, six solid monolithic bullet. And then coming over to the other side, we have the 70 grain load, and I captured all three of these bullets as well. And all three of them are bunched up all right here. They are all right at about, this one is about 26 and a half inches, and these other two are right at 27 inches. So excellent penetration with the 70 grain load as well. And once again, it looks like we did get some expansion. And then coming on back to the first block here, these blocks are a little bit clearer. You can see the wound cavity starting right about the two inch mark. That's pretty standard across the board. It opens up right here and then tapers off at about the eight inch mark. Sorry, it's kind of hard to see, but it's in there. So all in all, both loads performed remarkably similar to each other. The 70 grain load got a little bit more penetration. Something I wanted to note though, was the pretty darn good accuracy of both loads. So I don't shoot these for groups necessarily, but you can see on the front of the block here, this is the 62 grain block. I'll try and zoom in for you. There's one, two, three holes, and I was aiming right about dead center of the block. That is a three quarter inch group right there. And then coming over to the 70 grain block, similar story. And it's a little hard to see, there's a hole there, there and then right up here and i measured it before i whipped the camera out that's a one and a quarter inch group so even though the 70 grain bullet is recommended for one and eight twist or faster my cz with a one and nine twist shot both of these just fine and here we are looking at both the 62 grain and 70 grain barnes tsx bullets as fired from my CZ Model 527 carbine with the 18 inch barrel. The top row, the top three, are the 62 grain bullets and the bottom row are the 70 grain bullets. So we're gonna go ahead and go over all the metrics on these together. And I think this is the first double header video that I have made, or rather comparison video. So this will be interesting. Weight retention wise for the 62 grain bullets on top, we saw 62, 62, and 62 grains respectively for an average of 62 grains, and that is 100% weight retention. Not surprising. Now for the bottom row, the 70 grain bullets, same exact story. They were 70 grains across the board, 100% weight retention. Absolutely phenomenal performance from these Barnes bullets. And then on to expansion, surprisingly extremely similar expansion between both bullets. Well, I guess not really that surprisingly. There are only eight grains difference in weight. So let's go over at the top row, the 62 grainers. We saw 0 0.45, 0 0.46, and 0.47 inches for an average of 0.46 inches. And that's 2.1x expansion for the bottom row, the 70 grain bullets. We saw 0 0.44, 0 0.44, and 0.46 inches, which works out to 0.45 inches expanded diameter, which is right at 2x expansion. So just, just, I mean, a hair less expansion from the 70 grain bullet. Not surprising being that it was going a little bit slower than the 62 grain bullet. And now on to velocity. For the 62 grain bullets, we saw a high of 3065, a low of 3023, and an average of 3045 versus the factory build velocity of 3,000 feet per second. So we actually came in 45 feet per second faster than factory spec. Very surprising, love to see that. Also, it only had a 42 foot per second spread from high to low, so nice and tight. And then for the 70 grain bullets, our high velocity was 29.49, our low was 29.11 for an average of 29.36 versus the factory build velocity of 28.50. So again, we came in faster, 86 feet per second faster, love to see it. And the spread here was also very tight, only a 38 foot per second spread from high to low. Absolutely phenomenal performance velocity wise from both of these loads. And now on to penetration. We had very similar penetration. For the 62 grain bullet, we saw 25, 25, and 25 and a half inches rounding to the nearest half inch. That's 25 inches on average. For the 70 grain bullet, we saw 26 and a half, 27, and 27 inches which rounded to the nearest inch is 27 inches on average. So that slightly heavier 70 grain bullet did get us just a little bit more penetration. 
And now on to kinetic energy for the 62 grain bullet going on average 3,045 feet per second. That works out to 1,276 foot pounds of energy, which is right in line with most of your deer oriented 223 556 loads that I've seen. They tend to average around 1,200 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. This is right there added a little bit higher. And then for the 70 grain bullet going on average 2,936 feet per second at the muzzle, that works out to 1,340 foot pounds of energy, quite a bit higher than that 1,200 foot pound average that I was talking about. Very pleased with the performance of both of these bullets. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on those Barnes Vortex loads out of the 556. Both the 62 and 70 grain version. This was a fun video, sort of a double header here. And interestingly enough, across the board, both of these loads, both of these bullet weights performed almost exactly the same. And really, when you think about it, it's not super surprising. They only have an eight grain weight difference. So they're not really that different of a load. Uh, weight retention wise, 100% for both of them. Both the 62 and 70 grain bullets retained 100% of their weight. Expansion wise, they were almost identical. The 62 grain bullets on average expanded just a hair more. 2.1x expansion versus 2x expansion for the 70 grain. They were going a little faster. It makes sense they would have a little bit more expansion, but almost identical. Velocity wise, they both came in a little bit higher than their factory stated velocity. Very interesting. And that might have to do with these being. 5.56 five, millimeter loads, 5.56 five, by 4.5, as opposed to 2.23 with the rifle I'm shooting them out of. So I'm using a CZ 5.27 carbine, which is rated by CZ to shoot both 5.56 five, and 2.23 ammo. They say it right there on their website. Maybe that's why we're seeing higher velocity with the shape of the chamber and the load. I don't know. Either way, I'm pleased with it. It's always good to see when your velocity you actually get is at or above the factory rated velocity. It's so rare. And then on to penetration, very similar penetration from both loads, a little bit more with the 70 grain load. That makes sense. It's a heavier bullet that expanded just a hair less. It should penetrate a little bit more. And it did. The 62 grain load went all the way to 25 inches on average. Very consistent. All the bullets were right there next to each other. Same with the 70 grain load. 27 inches on average. So two more inches of penetration. But they were all right there almost next to each other in line. Extremely good. Extremely consistent performance from both of these loads across the board. And then kinetic energy wise, the 62 grain load came in at 1,276 foot pounds at the muzzle, while the 70 grain load edged it out a little bit with 1,340 foot pounds at the muzzle. Both of these are higher than the 1,200 foot pounds sort of average that I've seen with a lot of 223 deer hunting loads. And that's due to that extra velocity we saw. So all in all, both of these loads performed excellent. If I personally were looking for, you know, a 223556 load, to use for deer hunting or other medium game hunting, maybe hogs, stuff like that. These would, these would probably be at the top of my list. If my rifle shot these well, I would just pick whichever one my gun liked better. If I got better groups with the 62 grain or the 70 grain, I would just use the one that my rifle shot more accurately because the results between the two different bullet weights are so similar. The only thing that's gonna break it down for me is just which one's more accurate out of my gun. And with these two loads, I think we have a contender for the top spot for 223, 556 five, deer hunting loads, at least so far. We'll see if anything can edge them out. And if you or anybody you know has used this ammo on game, let us know in the comments how it did for you. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work, and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there.